Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into one of the most intriguing questions ever asked, are we living in a simulation? Think about it, what is reality? The world we perceive around us, is it truly real? Or could it be just an elaborate illusion, a virtual reality constructed by some advanced civilization? This idea isn't new. In fact, it's been around for centuries and it's known as the simulation hypothesis. From ancient philosophers to modern-day intellectuals like Elon Musk and Neil deGrasse Tyson, many have pondered this possibility. Take, for instance, the famous philosopher Plato. He questioned the nature of reality with his allegory of the cave. Imagine people who've been imprisoned in a cave all their lives, only seeing shadows on the wall. For them, those shadows are the entirety of reality. But today, with the advent of computers and virtual reality, the idea of a simulated world seems more plausible than ever. Just think about the sophisticated virtual worlds we can create with our technology. Philosopher Nick Bostrom has taken this idea even further. He proposes a thought-provoking argument known as Bostrom's simulation argument. According to Bostrom, one of the following statements must be true. Almost all civilizations at our level of technological development go extinct before becoming technologically mature. The fraction of technologically mature civilizations that are interested in creating ancestor simulations is almost zero. We are almost certainly living in a computer simulation. Let's break this down. Bostrom argues that if an advanced civilization could create highly realistic simulations of their ancestors, and they had the capability and desire to do so, they would likely create many such simulations. These simulations would be so detailed that the beings within them would be conscious and unaware that they are part of a simulation. This leads to a mind-boggling conclusion if such simulations are possible and are created in large numbers, the number of simulated beings would vastly outnumber the number of real beings. Therefore, statistically, it is more likely that we are among the simulated beings rather than the real ones. But how can we test this hypothesis? One suggestion is to look for limitations in our universe that might indicate it's a simulation. For example, the speed of light could be seen as a processing limit of a computational system. Quantum mechanics also provides some fascinating clues. One of the most intriguing aspects is the concept of wave-particle duality. This principle suggests that quantum particles, which make up all matter, can exist both as particles and as waves. Their behavior changes, depending on whether they are being observed or not. Consider the famous double-slit experiment. When particles like electrons are fired at a barrier with two slits, they create an interference pattern on the other side, behaving like waves. But when the same experiment is conducted with an observer watching the particles, they behave like particles, creating two distinct lines. This phenomenon is known as the observer effect. This observer effect is reminiscent of how a computer game works. In many high-quality games, the environment is rendered in detail only where the player is looking or interacting. The rest of the world is kept in a less detailed state to save computational power. This concept was famously explored in the movie The Matrix in the film. Humans live in a simulated reality created by intelligent machines to control them. The protagonist, Neo, discovers that what he thought was the real world is actually a sophisticated computer simulation. Just like in The Matrix, the simulation hypothesis suggests that our perceived reality could be an illusion. Everything we see, hear, and feel might be part of a complex simulation designed to make us believe we are living in a real, physical world. However, not everyone is convinced. Let's explore some of the arguments against the simulation hypothesis. First, the hypothesis is speculative and lacks empirical evidence. Critics argue that there is no concrete data to support the idea that we are living in a simulation. It's a hypothesis based largely on philosophical reasoning rather than scientific proof. Second, the complexity and scale of simulating an entire universe is mind-boggling. Creating a simulation with the depth and detail of our universe would require an astronomical amount of computational power, far beyond what we can currently comprehend. Simulating every particle, every physical law, and every conscious being would be an immense challenge. Third, simulating consciousness itself is a significant hurdle. We barely understand what consciousness is and how it arises. To replicate it in a simulation would require knowledge and technology that we are nowhere near achieving. 
This makes the idea of a perfect simulation even more speculative. Another argument is the lack of observable errors or glitches. In theory, a massive simulation like our universe would have some imperfections or inconsistencies, especially considering the vast amount of data it would need to process. However, we do not observe any such flaws that would suggest we are in a simulated environment. Philosophically, the simulation hypothesis is not falsifiable. This means it cannot be proven false. For a hypothesis to be scientifically valid, there must be a way to test and potentially disprove it. The simulation hypothesis does not meet this criterion, which places it more in the realm of belief rather than scientific theory. Lastly, some argue that the simulation hypothesis is an example of anthropic bias. It reflects our human tendency to think the universe must be like the things we create like computer simulations. Just because we can imagine the universe as a simulation doesn't necessarily mean it is one. So, are we living in a simulation? While it's a fascinating concept to ponder, we may never have a definitive answer. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more thought-provoking content. And a big shout out to our channel members and supporters your support makes this possible. Until next time, stay curious.